Hello, this is Professor Barker again, and we're going to talk about NI infectives. There's no such thing as a magic antibiotic that successfully treats every single infection. There are dozens of different antibiotics and other NI infective medications because each one is best at treating specific infections. In order to determine the right medication, we have to first determine what kind of infection the patient has. This is called identification of the causative organism. There are some antibiotics that are effective for treating a large variety of infections. These are called broad spectrum antibiotics. These are especially handy for patients who are critically ill from an infection that hasn't been identified but are too ill to wait for the infection to be com or for the identification to be completed. For instance, you walk into a room of your patient and you're just starting your shift. They're not doing so well. Fever 103, respirations at 30 and shallow, pulse racing at 130, blood pressure's dropping. This patient is about to go septic if we don't do something. Now, we can go ahead and collect our blood cultures, which is what the doctor will order. A lot of times blood cultures times two. You have to collect the culture before you start the antibiotics or the culture won't work. And we'll talk more about that. But as soon as you collect your blood cultures, it might take two or three days to identify the organism. This patient can't wait that long. This would be an excellent case for starting a broad spectrum antibiotic, which is probably what the doctor is going to order. He's going to, he or she, I often use the pronoun he for doctor, sorry. The doctor will probably take the best guess the doctor can at what it might be and prescribe a broad spectrum antibiotic and go ahead and get it started and see if it helps while we're waiting for the culture to come back. We don't just sit and wait for it to come back before we do anything and let the patient get septic and die. A few examples I have here of broad spectrum antibiotics. Carbo Carbapemus, uh, I'm not even going to try to <laughs> pronounce that one. Cephalosporins, tetracyclines, and fluoroquinolones are the ones that we, we will be talking about in our lecture. Then there are the narrow spectrum antibiotics. Examples are penicillin, rifamycin. These target specific types of infection, and these might be prescribed after your culture and sensitivity comes back. And you can see the difference in the little cartoon here. The broad spectrum is holding a bunch of different things, whereas the narrow spectrum is holding just one type. Now, can you think of an advantage of using a narrow spectrum rather than a broad spectrum? Well, the narrow spectrum antibiotics are going to be more specific in the infections which are targeted. One advantage is minimal collateral damage and decreased development of resistant strains of infection. Collateral damage is something that we hear about in um, when we're talking about war. And any type of antibiotic is, is its job is to destroy things, right? And in war, when a bomb goes off, collateral damage would, would be like killing civilians instead of soldiers that are um, being targeted. And that's kind of the way that antibiotics can work. If you use a narrow spectrum antibiotic, there's going to be less collateral damage sometimes, less killing of things that you don't want killed. There's also a difference between whether an anti infective kills bacteria or just incapacitates them. Bacteria static meds are designed to slow the growth and the spread of bacteria, whereas bactericidal actually are going to try to kill the invasive organisms or pathogens. The method used to identify a pathogen, or as this slide says, identify the bug, is called a culture and sensitivity test. That's real important to know. That's going to be on your test questions. Culture and sensitivity is how we identify a pathogen. 
This is done by a microbiologist or a lab assistant in the lab. And one advantage um, of going to RN school as opposed to LPN school is, well, I don't know if you'd see this as an advantage or not, but in RN school you have to take microbiology. And I thought it was interesting because I would have had no idea how they do this. I, I guess I just thought there was some magic fairy in a lab that determined stuff like this. But we actually um, were able to identify some stuff in my microbiology class, which has been a long time ago. But it did help me understand a little bit better. So these round plates that you see in the picture are called auger plates. And they're a little bit smaller than a saucer. And they're auger plates because they're filled with a substance called auger. And I don't remember exactly what auger is, but the thing you need to know about it is it's basically like bacteria food. It's, it's stuff that bacteria love to eat. And so you can put your bacteria on this plate and they're going to usually thrive. And so we get our, our sample. It might be a blood sample or a urine sample or whatever. And we smear it all over these auger plates and allow it to grow for a while. So the invasive organism is going to start eating up the auger and, and thriving. Then we start trying different substances. And you can see that in picture F, all the different colors. Those are all different antibiotics or different things to try and see which one results in decreased growth of the bacteria or kills the bacteria or whatever. And this is how they do a culture insensitivity. This is what an example of what might come back in your lab report. You can see on the left, it says ampicillin, dot, 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 and then R, vancomycin, S. The R and the S stand for resistant or sensitive. If the organism is sensitive to a particular substance, that means that it will respond, or that's what you want. You want it to be sensitive. And so with this patient, if we try to use ampicillin, to treat the pathogen, it probably wouldn't work because the pathogen has shown resistance to ampicillin. However, if we use vancomycin, it would probably be effective because the pathogen has shown a sensitivity to vancomycin. We can see in the lower right corner that this was actually a blood culture, and so they took just a little bit of the blood, smeared it over the auger plate, and you can see no growth in five days on this one. It can take a while, two, three, four, five days sometimes. And that's why we can't always wait till the culture sensitivity comes back or is resulted before we start the medication. However, we have to wait until the blood is drawn. So again, just to reiterate what I'm talking about, you have a patient, they get sick, high fever usually, you suspect infection, first of all we would call the doctor, but what the doctor is probably going to do is order blood cultures times two and then start a broad spectrum antibiotic. You have to collect the blood cultures first because if you give the antibiotic first and then collect the blood cultures, it will throw it off because the blood will already have the antibiotic in it and we won't be able to tell what it's sensitive to and what it's not. So you have to collect the sample first, whether it's urine or blood or stool or whatever it is that you're going to test, you collect that first before you start the antibiotic. However, you do not have to wait till the test results come back. So collect the sample, start the antibiotic if, the, if it's been ordered, and then wait for the results. And when you get the results, sometimes we need to call them the results to the doctor. And the doctor might, at that point, choose to change what antibiotic is being given. Besides bacteria, other infections are caused by viruses, fungi, and parasites. We'll be talking a little bit about each one. First we're going to talk about bacteria and you'll hear lots of strange sounding words when bacteria are described and it's really not as strange as you might think because all these words are really doing their Latin words I assume and they're describing what someone sees in a microscope and so anytime you hear the word 
coccyx or cocci, all that means is round. So when someone looks at this thing under a microscope, it's round or spherical. Bacillus means pill-shaped, like you can see the little blue pill-shaped or rod-shaped, it sometimes is called, and spirillium is shaped like a spiral. And then also they um, have words like staphylococcus, means the spheres are kind of clumped together. And you can see a picture of that. It's the, the yellow staphylo means clumped together. Whereas in sometimes they might occur in chains. Streptococcus is spheres in a straight chain. And so if you had streptobacillus, I don't even know that there is such a thing, but you can picture what that might look like. It would be like a bunch of little sausages connected together, right? So all of these words are just describing what the particular pathogen looks like under a microscope. Well, I didn't mean to go on to fungi yet, but another thing that we talk about is whether or not it's gram-positive or gram-negative. That's just talking about a, a particular stain or dye, kind of like food coloring, that the microbiologist will put on the specimen and sometimes it will absorb the dye and then when it when the microbiologist tries to wash it with alcohol it, it doesn't wash away so if it was like blue dye the organism will stay blue because this the cell has absorbed the blue dye other times when they dye it blue and then they wash it with alcohol it washes right away because the cell wall hasn't absorbed the blue dye it was just on there temporarily and so this is what it is being talked about with gram positive and gram negative let's see if I have a slide for that well I think I do further on generally and this isn't always true but generally gram positive tend to be a little bit more treatable with antibiotics and gram negative tend to be a little bit more resistant and it has to do with the structure of their cell wall and it has nothing to do with whether or not they stain blue but the fact that they stain blue and stay that way tells a microbiologist something about its cell wall that makes it usually a little bit more um, able to be killed or attacked with antibiotics which is good In addition to bacteria, other infective agents include viruses, fungi, and parasites. Here's some pretty nasty pictures of fungus, and we'll see a lot of this in the nursing home. Yeast is what it's called sometimes a yeast infection. You can see the little baby has the diaper rash. Well, grown-ups get that too when they have to wear diapers due to incontinence. You, up in the upper left, you can see yeast underneath um, a woman's breast. We see that a lot in the nursing home. It just gets hot and wet and sweaty underneath their breasts. Also, if they have um, a large abdomen and they have abdominal folds, those can harbor yeast. And we treat that with an antifungal powder that we'll see. It's called Nystatin. I'll be talking about that later. In the upper right corner that looks like some ringworm, that's a type of a, a yeast. And it can be on your head in between the toes. We call that athlete's foot. I'm sure you've heard of that. We're also going to be talking about viruses. Viruses are quite a bit different than bacteria. There's some debate, but most people that are in the know think as of bacteria as living organisms and viruses as non-living. As a result, a non-living thing can't be killed, right? And so that's one reason why antibiotics don't work on viruses. So we'll never use antibiotics to treat viral infections. They, they just don't help, and as we'll learn later, they can actually hurt. To help understand what a virus is, imagine a copy machine. And it's just going and it's making copies of this piece of paper that you have over and over. Now imagine at some point in time, oh, a drop of blood or a fly or something lands on it and all of a sudden the copies have this picture of the fly or this stain from the 
coffee or the blood or whatever, and the copies keep coming out with that stain on them until you correct it. That's kind of what a virus is.